name is Stephen Leon, and I'm here running for Congress. So I'd like to thank the GCD Network for giving me this opportunity to share my platform and what my, I'm about. And uh, let's see if we can uh, just jump right into it. Let's jump right into it. You'll have to uh, bear with me as I'm getting started here entirely independent. So my budget is limited, so I don't have a camera crew and uh, all this stuff. There was a, even just logging in here, just it's simple Zoom stuff. So let's, um, let's start with this. Uh, so a little more about me. My name is Stephen Leon. I'm running for Congress here in Virginia's 8th District. Uh, for some of you who don't know where that is, um, if you look at D.C., there's a map of it, right? It looks like a diamond. It's the first congressional district west of the Potomac River. So it's Arlington, Falls Church, Alexandria, uh, McLean, and a little bit of, um, no, that, that's about it. So it's the, the part of Falls Church is just on the inner side of 495. So Tyson's Corner Mall. You're familiar with that. That's not us. Um, so I was born and raised here in Arlington, Virginia. I work in Alexandria at a smaller law firm, intellectual property law. That's the most prominent experience that I bring to the table. I've been doing it for 15 years. And uh, for, again, intellectual property law is patents, copyrights, trademarks. Very useful thing, especially in politics. You see all the different types of branding and slogans and what's really cool about that is that's where our innovation is this is what really makes me feel sparked up to to do this on how you know how we're viewed in the world how we view ourselves you know there's a lot of things that i hear uh politically what defines us what is our identity and that's unique to everybody right but if you i don't subscribe too much to how i vote to, as as a is, is my ultimate identity. I define myself from what I do if that's in my job, my family, and my community, whatever that is, you know. And that's, uh, I, I feel that identity. How I look on the outside to that is, wow, just talking right now. I talked to my, uh, my partner about this and I'm like, do you ever notice like when you hear yourself on camera? It's not, you never, you know, Johnny Depp is a good example. You see him on the inside studio and he'll, uh, He's very introverted. He's very introverted. You know, all the personality stuff aside, just to see somebody that prominent still have a difficult time seeing themselves amidst all their accomplishments. So just being comfortable with that, what you sound like, uh, how you might view yourself and others and, and how you vote. I mean, that, that's just not where I rest all my political esteem, right? Or just all my esteem. There might be a little, you know, there's some identity there. So anyhow, moving forward. Um, as far as my job goes, like that identity that I have doing, being in this uh, industry for 15 years, I even started my own side business. If I could uh, probably just go ahead and, oh, I can't share my screen. So that's okay. I'll just uh, shoot from the hip with that. And uh, so if you go to my LinkedIn, first off, if you go to my website, leonforcongress.us, L-E-O-N, for congress.us, there is another, make sure it's, dot us not dot com because that's somebody else but you'll see that there's a screenshot in the background um where it's a liberty you know balance and that's prominently what, what i'm about but in, with that professional experience that i bring um you know i've worked in pretty much every department that an ip law firm could provide um the structure there is partners staff it's basically that so there's no you know, it's a law firm. There isn't any stock. It, you know, it's still a private institution. Excuse me. So, um, I have a couple of patents. One of those is rooted and uh, founded in energy infrastructure, with all the technology and all the different stuff that's out there, and even the broad scope term itself, infrastructure. What does that encompass, right? So, uh, yeah, there's a patent in there. It could take you a little while to read it. I spent a lot of time researching that. So it's cool. That just got granted a patent. So if this doesn't work out for me running for office, <laughs> I'm going to go to the private, to maintain my positions in the private sector. But the thing about energy infrastructure and everything that's going on, um, you know, some of, there's, there's things that need to be expedited. That's a part of my, my platform. I I'd hope that I could have shared my screen. I'm just learning this process, my first show. Okay. So um, going through that LinkedIn, you'll see just again, that jumping into my platform, I was listening to my, the, the previous presenter and that just, that's exactly, that hit exactly where I'm at. So, Though I, I, the name of this show is From the Left, right? I, I've always voted Democrat. And my, my only issue with that is that 
I've been listening to the right. I've been seeing the way things have been going and you reach a certain progress trap with anything. You can do that. You know what I mean? And uh, at least politically, there are a lot of aspects where it's going socialist. We don't want that. You know, socialism will hinder progress. Um, it, it limits innovation. Sure, like people would be, you would you would think that with that competition, if you suppress that competition, that natural competition that people have, which isn't part of who we are, even as natural human beings, that's the thing about American society, just flourishes what is natural, right? And uh, so what is it happening there? It's just, it's, it, it suppresses that ultimately it makes us less competitive um if you talk about things like universal health care and education how are you going to pay for that right um maybe if we one day when we have asteroid money you know there's a lot of tech that's going out there we just uh, there was a, a launch and um this past october the uh asteroid 16 psyche mission that's an orbital mission to study asteroid 16 psyche it's right outside of the, the mars orbit where that, that asteroid belt is and this thing is uh about the size of i think it's geez, i have to look at my, my my information here but it's pretty big right it's they're talking as far as it equates to dollar amounts ten thousand quintillion that's 19 zeros <laughs> so but uh, the way it rests today and uh, if you look at something like canada and the reason why they have universal health care and it works is because they come here to do other major surgeries and i know that again because my my partner has been a huge influence with uh, not an absolute influence, but definitely has brought a lot of things to the table to help me understand just her, from what she sees from healthcare or even herself where the Democratic Party is going. Um, so, and that is that fiscal responsibility. When Joe Biden first got into office, he was called out by Abigail Spanberger and others, where it's just, he didn't campaign on doing FDR-esque type policies for that. He was basically get us back in a line and let's do that, right? I know that might upset a lot of people on the right. What, is that, what exactly does that mean? Right, get us back in line. Um, you know, yeah, my platform is a balance of general welfare and fiscal responsibility. I'm all, right now, the, the, if you look at, there's an Axios article out there for independence, uh, that, that is, most of us are independents because we've alienated from the parties. The forward parties, are they're trying to capitalize on that momentum. Uh, but I, what I'm noticing, it just kind of looks like they're succumbing to the same thing with any party. You know what I mean? There's this internal conflict and then that competition with others and you're not entirely being fair. What I've done is I've borrowed ideas from across the table. So with on the left, if uh, the pros and cons are um, where we're at today, but taking it just whatever FDR did at that time in the country to, to you know, create safeguards for us, to, so whether that's Social Security, Medicare, uh, now we've got tax uh, credit for, for children that help that's helpful but there's some other stuff that's going on uh, my congressman my opponent uh, congressman buyer he and some others are pushing out a uh it's called 401 kids and that's already out there you know if you want to get a child savings account it's already out there you know but the fact that he's not asking us if that's what we want he's just assuming right and it's going that way and that's giving us a bad rap and I'm sure people on the right are the same thing with some of the things that are, that are going on. When it comes to general welfare, to recap, is that you could start that ideologue with the beginning of FDR, right? And then you could probably say a prominent leader to that is JFK, right? And then on the right, if you want to, if you're looking at fiscal responsibility, you're looking at the same things. And most, one of the prominent leaders of that is going to be Nixon, right? But this business of religion being mixed up in politics, it, it, it seems to be, if you look at the way a skateboard evolved, you know what I mean, back in the 50s, 60s on a two by four and roller skates, right? And how and where it is today, uh, or even music. It just seems to me that what has happened there is that JFK, they were very worried that he was gonna be, uh, that he was the first Catholic president, that he was gonna impose his religious beliefs into office. And he was able to say, hey, look, I don't, the Pope doesn't tell me what to do and I don't tell the Pope what to do. Right. So, um, and he was able to prove that, right. And just to have that impartiality. And I guess with Nixon came along and just slowly through each generation took that backwards because they had no other ideas. And if you really look at this honestly, and I have to do this too, if you look at just where we are in the country in the past, what are we, 246 years, I'll give or take a year. Uh, so, um, if you look at our, our short, but long history and how we've evolved and where it comes to this is a, a pretty big deal <laughs> to sum up the entire country in uh, a few minutes. Um, when, when it's getting us with the collective interest moving forward and 
and with that, beginning with slavery and how it's it was the Southern Democrats that kept that were proponents of slavery, and it was the Republican Party and Lincoln being prominent to that. That and his innovation alone, Lincoln was the only president to have a patent. Um, a lot of people don't know that it was a a vessel to a boat to help other boats get out of shallow water. It's pretty cool if you look at that. And just if you've seen the movie Lincoln by Spielberg, I love that movie. It's one of my top five. So then as things slowly evolved over Democratic Party, you know what I mean? Andrew Jackson was just big stain on, on, the, on the party as far as how ideologues change, how they, how they adapt and how they evolve. And um, how, uh, furthermore, to, to how now things, it took 50 years. This is fascinating to me, how it took 50 years of congressional debate to get Amendment 13, Amendment of War, to pass right things are far more evolved we're not going to have another war if the south ever had an idea that they would rise again j6 was that that wasn't that that's where it rests that's where it stops right and we have enough 80 percent of people just want to go to work and all that and if you're looking at the way things have flipped in the last 50 years now it's the republicans that are imposing things that what most of us believe are Unconstitutional. Everything that we have been pushing for, whether it's gay rights or women's choice or environmental protections and technology, or if it's anything that you would consider. The only thing that I'm aware of is yes, taking going, keeping that continuing to 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 have that general welfare to access. Again, that's why I go back to the general welfare fiscal responsibility balance to have that. So that's what it is. And uh, there's not going to be another war. There's just not going to be. And if you look at Donald Trump and how he didn't drain the swamp, if you know what that means, if you know it, there's an HBO documentary out there and uh, it'll explain what that means. And that's the money out of government. The first element on my first item on my website is a American anti-corruption. Now, for people that are a little more versed in politics, you would say, that's what Elizabeth Warren campaigned on in her 2020 bid. Yes, but it's not the same one. This American Anti-Corruption Act, uh, it's the first item on my website, again, leonforcongress.us, where um, there's a really cool Jennifer Lawrence video. Michael Douglas is also in there. They explain that if you, it, again, this is accredited from FEC, uh, a former FEC chairman and constitutional scholars, that the way it is now, the politicians, uh, state and federal spend 70% of their time raising money as soon as they get an office. So 30%, if anything, is what gets done. This past Congress is, if you've seen the numbers, they're one of the most lowest we've ever been. And a lot of this has to do with, there are people on the left that aren't really asking us voters if this is what we want. And then it's giving the right an excuse not to vote on it. Right. And then there's also other things. Uh, there's their own division, everyone's kind of uh, an enemy within themselves in the, in the Republican Party as it weighs today. There's a mean it can't change, and that's what I'm trying to encourage. Same thing on the left. Um, you know, we're, uh, we, we, we're, we're a little timid on the left. If I, if you look at any of my social media pages and see how I go after people on the left and right, some people may think that that is uh, volatile or douchebag or whatever it might be. I'm just being honest. You know what I mean? How I am in the office or how I am here at home talking to you, it's just a completely different world. It's mostly fictional. You use memes to make people think of whatever it is you're trying to communicate a little more interesting. If that's a metaphor or whatever, great writing. That's all that is. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, with the American Anti Corruption Act, there are other elements in there that, that help. Uh, unfortunately, when you look at the right, the way that they're trying to impose, Ron DeSantis is a perfect example of what we don't want on how he would try to say that he has a Florida model. And I, and I take that, I have to. A little bit personally, being from Virginia, <laughs> if you look, <laughs> I mean, not that we're, I, we were the founding, we're the first uh, English colony. You know, we're ahead of the game with a lot of things. Everyone knows it. So, um, and just his, uh, everything that he tried to campaign on, on it, there was just judges all over the country saying they're unconstitutional, especially a lot of the redistricting, things like that. Yeah, there's no, they're, they're, for the lack of better ideas, and it's just become this 70% market and then the left's just opposing just pointing fingers it's we're it's fine it, we're, we're done okay and calling out donald trump and then not draining the swamp and then taking this idea the, this reality of 
trying to get money out of politics. And then he himself is committing all kinds of crimes. And then spinning that, morphing it into the federal government being the enemy of the state. That's not fair. Does the federal government probably need reformation? Sure, especially when it comes to the DEA. Um, I, you know, with all of, I live right here in Arlington, I haven't once gotten, I'm not paranoid with the federal government. You know what I mean? I haven't gotten a subpoena and what have i done what have i done? i've done I, I i probably exercise my free speech better than the best of them i censor myself on as far as social media you know i go to work every day i go i go to work at a law firm in alexandria you know i get to, i feel very fortunate that i see the george masonic uh national memorial every day that's our, our first commander in chief right there's honor and there's prudence and you get into really not getting all caught up in the disillusionment with what they're selling that's what my platform uh, is all about. If you go through it further, um, there's things like media literacy. That's a big thing. It's another thing that, that Trump had failed on where, yeah, there's, there's hype. There's hype out there. They, if you, this media bias chart, if you look at it again on my website, um, you'll see that uh, there's this uh, a woman named Vanessa Otero. She's the CEO that founded the media bias chart. You would think immediately that it would be bias. That's not fair. You have to look at her methodology. Look at she doesn't go in there rate it herself. She hires journalists, laymen, business folks. Just look at the methodology and see where everyone ranks and, and where they rate. And it's not just black and white. It's not just fake and not fake. There's opinion. There's uh, go. She would. She does a much better job. It's completely independent. You know, to have that cognitive framework. If you like somebody's personality, just for the sake of that. You're just going to believe everything they say, and you know something's wrong there. This media literacy chart will—it's like a compass. It's like a compass, and it will be able to empower you to vote in quarterly. Like I'm not going to tell you, um, you know, I, I have my own favorites. I, I read a lot of the news these, you know, these days. It's Washington Post that ranks on the on the left, but but it's not, you know, disinformation. It's not, the Hill is by far the most that I found. That's my favorite. That that is more. They'll say nonpartisan, but it's just words, you can get caught up, lost up in the meanings of words. It, it breaks in the middle. Okay? And the Wall Street Journal, that's my favorite, especially when I'm looking at someone. I have no problems calling out Joe Biden. When it, right now, especially, again, furthermore, with my competitor, my opponent, Don Beyer, he's just sucking up to the better economy that we're seeing. And that is all due to consumer spending. And even that's not fair. If you say that we're, we have a, a better economy, the numbers are better. But there are people still struggling. So when we have recessions in this country, the district that I live in, we don't really notice it that much. The federal shutdown, the government shutdowns, yes, there's a lot of federal employees here. And they keep it pushing around here too. And it's just, uh, but there are, I recognize that there are other districts out there that don't have that uh, steady way of life. Look how close we are to, to power. That's a big part of it. Um, we're not uh, Hollywood, you know what I mean? We don't have a lot of entertainment. Um, but just what a, a congressional district or state or neighborhood or whatever it is, they're sources of economy that's making me think of coal country. I've done some, um, if anyone's been to the uh, citizens climate lobby, that's a uh, volunteer. And you can see on how there are people that are fully aware that there's climate change and yet they're dependent on coal. What do they do? That goes into some of the climate agenda that I have. If you really look at it, it's very important <laughs> that you go in there and if you're on the left or the right, really look at this language and just be patient. And you'll be able to see what is BS and what is not, right? And I've spent a lot of time just being honest, constitutionally honest with myself and assembling a plan with that. But yeah, that's the thing with uh, Joe Biden is that um, he, a very superficial man. Joe Biden is very superficial and he, everyone knows his voting record where he's stood on democratic policies he hasn't always voted that way you know it was to me it's like we just took uh, a superficial name to defeat another superficial name joe biden is probably the lesser of these two uh if it wasn't for the the reasonable right we would go socialist and i and that's not what i want i don't want that i'm a competitive guy but i also believe that there's some some other things little tweaks that we can do where to protect capitalism from itself, which is exactly what the constitution does. If it's amendment one and uh, yeah, you know, I'm a, I'm a very spiritual guy, but I don't, that's a whole nother discussion, <laughs> but the, the, the arguments are obvious and they're apparent, you know what I mean? So, but as far as within my own party, you know, to see Don Beyer just in the last uh, couple of days, just reposting, most people aren't that involved in the community. They're very busy. 
you know what I mean? To go out there and shake hands with uh, whoever it is, you know, out there in the public and just make it look like you're working, you know, that's <laughs> your campaigning uh, with only a 30% efficacy. Uh, it's something, one, I don't have time for, but I'm always involved. In I, I don't need a pat on the back for just being decent to people. You know what I mean? I have a day job. I go to church meetings. That's part of my uh, kind, of, kind of spiritual thing that I do. Um, I'll talk about it. Cameras aren't there. I help people. We, I help people that uh, come in not exactly on the best of winning streaks. No, no one. So anyhow, um, that that that's something I do for free. That's something that I don't. But I mentioned that about me. You know, that's something that's there. But um, and that's really mo much all the time I have for it, you know with when it comes to what I've done in the community. Um, but just those principles, practicing uh, certain principles, all being self-honest, constitutionally self-honest with myself and everything that I do. Right. So, um, yeah, you know, again, I, I could chew out anybody, anybody who's not being constitutionally honest with themselves. It's the fake Carrie Lake or Marjorie Taylor Greene or Matt Gates or AOC. Maybe she's going, I need to get her to, to look at some of these other things and how we can go to the private sector without just, without stealing or making it socializing. Again, you'd have to look at uh, the, the big thing that we need to go to the to, to the financial sector. We have to trigger something. We, we can't be dependent on government funding for everything. And you can't just deny it either and get into disillusion, and just blame uh, whatever. It just doesn't work. It's not working. Right? So if we can mandate fossil fuel assets to offset the green premium, is sometimes I can wonder, as soon as you hear that language, green premium, or if you hear that term, the swamp, oh, no, you know what I mean? Like, I can't handle it. Just do some research. Okay? We're grown-ups here. You know what I mean? I get it. Like it's very easy to isolate yourself, especially come out of COVID, and it's just easier to to deny it or move on or something like that. But I'm looking at this stuff very sternly. We there we have problems. We all know what what are the real solutions? Here? What what better ideas are? There? But it certainly isn't um, just you know sucking up to party. And you know, I have no problems telling Joe Biden and Don Byer that the better economical numbers are due to consumer spending. The only reason why I know that. Because of media literate. I went to the Wall Street Journal. You know what I mean? That that would be my my beacon of fiscal responsibility. And they rate on the right. And you don't see them going after any personalities or anything like that. They're dealing with money and progress. I saw and it's cool. It's not just that. I saw uh I got a, a notification. There's a paywall. I, I pay I, I pay I figure if I'm gonna <laughs> you know learn more about finance and, and trust the sources that it's gonna be Wall Street Journal. They rate very well on that uh, media bias chart. And uh, there was a, a notification for a video game called Cyberpunk 2075 or something. It's got Keanu Reeves in it. When it first came out, it wasn't so well. They did something else to it recently. And I'm, I'm too old. I don't have time to play video games. Um, I will play Halo from time to time. But, uh, you know, and that's cool. That um, That's what the Wall Street is. They're focusing on money and just if it's a product. That's just what a news outlet does. You know what I mean? Um, so I try not, I like it because it's, it removes the personalities. It's very easy to get into those, uh, those personality games. And that's not what it's about. Nowhere on earth is, is the way that we see politics functional in any business organization, any environment. Before I was uh, working in law firms, I was a temp. Um, you know what I mean? It, it, that, that was something that could thrive in this area. Worked in a lot of different industries, a lot of different offices. Essentially, the dynamics are the same. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I, don't, I, don't, like, I don't like that... Uh, that in so many subtle roundabout ways, if it's Don Byer and Joe Biden or anyone else on the left saying that it's because of democratic policies, that uh, is the reason for the, the recent better economy. It's because of consumer spending. I think I, I really like the psychology of things. If you wonder, what is it about um, Tom Brady? You know, when he's, what is this, what's going on in his mind? Not just his patterns. It's three to four seconds. As soon as he hikes the ball that he, shoots it in the slot every single time for or three out of five plays. You know what I mean? What else is, what's going on in his head? Why is it, is it, he's just that good and he just needs another championship or any sport? Like what is going on? Or Michael Jordan, what's going on in his head? Right. Um, so the, just the psychology of that, just thinking that biodynamics, it, it's, it, it's upsetting when I know that the, the reality is it's consumer spending and the psychology of that behind there is the, I think out of COVID, you know what I mean? We kind of, when Y2K came around, I was what, uh, 18, 17, 18? And my mind was like, they're going to take care of it. And it's just hype. You know what I mean? And it did, right? But I'm not the ones that actually took care of that, right? So when it comes to anything else, um, when you're 
spending uh just you're locked in covid for quite a while and you decide you know what i'm just going to spend it'll get it'll take it'll work itself <laughs> it's not as easy as to save as it has been in other generations and again that's all if you i've only covered like 10 to 15 percent of my platform uh it was not my intent to to do that throughout 30 minutes it just couldn't be done i wish i could share my screen that'll be another thing we'll talk to the producers about but um so yeah, I think people just wanted to go out there and spend. No one, you couldn't say that in, in whatever translucent way in Joe Biden's reckless government spending positions that that got into us subconsciously to go ahead and spend anyways. No, because a lot of that stuff has been shut down because of the right. You know what I mean? And uh, so I was just thinking that before the, the show. I was like, huh, this is the reason why? Was he leading by example? No, because he wasn't allowed to spend as much as he wants and he still wants to spend more. And he's just trying to capitalize on that general empathy. And if you're on the right, you know, there's a lot of uh, politicians, especially presidential candidates that have put themselves in this position. Capitalism is good, but if you keep continue to, to have it reckless, you know what I mean? As if the, the, the opposite of that would be for general welfare, reckless spending. If you just reckless capitalism will destroy the market, it would. It, this, this, this earth is just like any other system. We are in an Anthropocene. We have an effect on it. basic chemistry. And I know it's very easy to deny, or even if you're on the left, or whatever it is, it's very easy to deny and just trust our elected leaders. A good thing today with the tools that are, that are already out there and what you see on my platform will, will empower you to be independently minded. And then when you look at these things, it's like whether they're on the left or the right, you just want to be like, why? <laughs> why? Why, is it, why did it come with this? This is what my campaign is all about. Hopefully we can find a general welfare fiscal responsibility balance. My time is up and uh, I'll see you next week.